I want to walk through the center of the door without any assistance. Okay. The next step Alan Zarad takes will be one of the greatest strides yeah. forward in his life. Right there. That's right. Exactly. One that allows him to see his future in an entirely new way. Oh, yes. <laughs> you just saw your first sunshine. Oh, okay. no, that was her. That's <laughs> true. So Mr. Zarad has a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. It's an inherited disease that involves the degeneration of a cell type in the retina called photoreceptors. All right, ready to put those on? I'm ready. Mayo Clinic ophthalmologist and retinal surgeon Raymond Iezzi has made it his life's mission to try to restore vision, even artificial vision, for people like Alan. The retina in these patients is relatively healthy uh, except for the photoreceptors. And so what we're trying to do is replace the function of these lost photoreceptors with the retinal prosthesis. The prosthesis is basically a bionic eye. While decades of research have convinced Dr. Aezi it's possible, this next moment convinces him that it's also essential. There! Yeah! What do you see? <laughs> With family members in tears, Alan is given his first glimpse of his wife Carmen in more than 10 years. This is what his camera is capturing right now. This is the frame. While the bionic system's interpretation of what Alan looks at may seem rough and pixelated to others, for Alan, it is literally an eye-opening revelation. Oh, okay. It's, it's going to take, yes, it's going to take interpretation of the shape of the light that's flashing. That's right. Okay, <laughs> because it's a pulsing light. It's that's not right. like regular vision where it's that's like right. constant. It's the flash, and I've got to be able to interpret the changes in that's that exactly shape. That's exactly right. Okay, let's okay. do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how are <laughs> I? Picked, I picked you up. Oh. You up. <laughs> it's crude, but it's significant. You know, it, it it'll work. Alan knew his restored vision would be limited. While a sighted person would see this hallway like this, Alan's bionic eye converts the scene into flashes of light. These small flashes of light are sort of like the, the, the points of light on a scoreboard at a baseball game. To try to imagine how it might look to Alan, Dr. Iezzi says to picture contrasting light and dark blocks on a grid. But by moving his head and using his visual memory and all of his cognitive skills and his remarkable capacity to get around, Mr. Zared can reconstruct a scene. How it works is a bioengineering marvel, starting with the half centimeter wide electronic strip Dr. Iezzi placed inside Alan's eye. It's a very delicate device and it's an array of electrodes that actually have to lay on a curved surface in the back of the eye where the retina is. And basically we place an electronics package around the eye, fixate that electronics package, and then we enter through the eye wall, through the white part of the eye. There's actually a portion of the device that's outside of the eye and a portion of the device that's inside of the eye on the retinal surface. Called the Argus II, the system is designed by Second Sight. Animation shows how 60 electrodes on a tiny grid stimulate the retina cells with patterns of pulses, thus sending signals to the brain. Right here in the center over the bridge is where the uh, camera is that's picking up the images. The front piece is a radio frequency antenna, and the back piece is part of the video processing unit. You're putting me to the test here. Several weeks after his operation, Alan says his ability to interpret the system's visual images is continually improving. I feel more confident in, in being able to uh, navigate around furniture items, chairs, and, and tables. Alan says moments of newfound appreciation often surprise him, even during routine tasks, such as assembling his favorite breakfast egg sandwich. The revelation, as it were, was the fact that when I turned to look at the frying pan, I could tell that the eggs had turned white as a result of the cooking. And that was a very new experience for me. I think it'll help him to navigate better and just to enjoy a whole lot more in life. I mean, not that he doesn't enjoy life now, but it's 
This is just really cool. <laughs> Back to that morning when Alan's bionic eye was first activated. He wasn't the only one inspired by its potential. So was another one of Dr. Iezzi's retinitis pigmentosa patients, a teenage boy named Caleb, who also happens to be Alan's grandson. Should Caleb ever need it, the doctor says, the technology will only get better. While Mr. Zared has 60 points of stimulation, um, if we were able to increase that number to several hundred points of stimulation, uh, I think we could extend the technology so that patients could recognize faces and perhaps even read. There. Yes, there he is! <laughs> so I hope it's an encouragement to him to realize that I think it's pretty exciting to think about the future for him. Legally blind for most of his life, Alan says he adapted extremely well as the last rays of light gradually faded to darkness. But he admits, this day was definitely the answer to a prayer. There is always that desire to say, uh, what would it be like if I could be more independent, if I could appreciate uh, more of the things that are in my environment and, and enjoy uh, participating uh, more fully? Uh, because part of the issue is that you lose contact with the world around you. One step at a time. Alan says he can't wait to see what's ahead. Oh, I can see with my eyes closed. <laughs> it's going to be an exciting journey. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Dennis Dota.